Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is The Park Bench. Uh, yes, and we are on the outskirts of Barnet. In North London. In, in what, is, what is quite a lovely little park here, in a very nice, very nice area. And I suspect at some point someone's going to come over and ask us to stop filming. It feels like <laughs> that kind of area. I, I think maybe stop making so much noise yeah. rather than stop filming. So it's been a year or so since we last did a video about what kit we use to film videos on our own channels and on here. And it has changed since then. A little bit. A little bit. Well, all of my kit's changed, hmm. so. Um, and most of yours has as well, I think. A little bit. All right. Should we start with what's in frame? Yes. What's this, Matt? At the top, this is a... I should have looked it up before we started it's using a it. It's, it's a, a Rode Rode NTG2 microphone. Uh, it's a shotgun microphone, and we use it so then we can hear us. And it cuts away the background noise. But if you point it that way, you can hear yeah. a rabbit. You can hear a rabbit. Rabbits, rabbits don't actually make much noise. No, you no. could probably just hear distant traffic noise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom of it, I have a this Tascam DR10, possibly X. I, I talked over there, but Tascam. Yes, Tascam DR10X. It is a recorder. I was about to unplug it to show it. That's silly. Uh, it's a recorder with an XLR plug on the end of it, so you can shove it on whatever microphone and hit record. And it records. As it records. A handy feature of it. Um, you can set it so then it records at two gain levels. Oh, that's handy. So if you accidentally put it too high and you've got clipping in there, yeah. which I did with the video that went up this week. Uh, the one that just went up about uh, wartime airfields. Mm. It's just a tiny bit of clipping in there. I wish I'd been able to, to record a slight low volume. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of handy. For that. Now, my microphone stuff, when I'm doing stuff on my own or on my own channel, do you want to keep that mic pointed at me or Sorry, not? Sorry, I was looking at it and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I have two of these, one for a backup just in case. Uh, which is also Rode, because they make very good microphones. Uh, and this is the Rode SmartLav Plus. The Plus is important. Yes, the SmartLav, full stop, It's not is good, nowhere near as good it's as the It's got a really Plus. loud hiss on it. Um, there is an adapter on... So, natively, this... I don't know why I'm hot. Natively, this plugs into a smartphone. Uh, and you use the app on there, or use your and voice. Show the other end of it. Show the other end of it. Yeah, okay. It okay. is a Lavalier microphone. Oh, yeah, that's worth saying. So you can clip it on you. They're all omnidirectional, so you can point it whatever way. Yeah. Um, and it'll pick up your voice. You'll see it clipped on his t shirt or in yeah. his hoodie. I mean, the audio is okay from it. Like for a 40 quid mic, it is exceptionally it's, good. It's brilliant. Yeah. Because if, if you're. If, if you get a 10, 15 pound lav mic, it's terrible. Yes. If you get a good lav mic, it's at least 250 quid. Yeah. That is 40 and it is fine. Yes. It's but not excellent, but it's fine. And with a little bit I of I don't tweaking, have any problem with yeah, it. Yeah, you, you give me a couple of frequencies to dip in it because you know it makes it sound less boxy. But say. that's mainly because it's near your throat. Yes. And because you wear t-shirts, not shirts. Oh yeah, that's true. It ends up yep. closer to your throat, so you sound very throaty. And frequently I'm somewhere windy and it's under, buried under three layers of clothing yeah. or something like that. Uh, if it's on a shirt, it's slightly yeah. further away from the throat, so it sounds yeah. less throaty. So that's got an adapter on it, which in turn, the reason I put my uh, backpack in easy reach, plugs into this, which is a Zoom H1 recorder. Ooh. You don't need one of these for the Rode Smart Lab. You can use your smartphone. I use this because it's a lovely recorder. One AA battery lasts like a month for me using it, maybe two or three if I'm not using it that much. Um, it's not great. It's got its problems. If you plug an external mic into it, it's excellent. As a thing that can record a thing you're plugging something into it, yeah. wow, sentences, uh, then it's okay. Yes, and if you leave it completely untouched on something that is not going to move at all, in a situation where there is zero wind, it's a really good in built-in stereo recorder. But it's built of fairly cheap plastic. Can you Open. hear that? If you can hear that just from me holding it. Yeah. Think how much is vibrating through into its microphones and picking up. It sounds horrible. You can't, even if you think you're holding it still. Yeah, the you tiniest, know. the tiniest little adjustment makes it sound terrible. That said, I like it because it means I can take it on location, not have to worry about plugging a thing to my smartphone, so I might be using that for something else. Um, yeah, so you, just, can, you can secrete this in a interviewee's pocket. Yes. And then it'll record away and then you can sync again later to the video. Yes, which is why at the start of each of these videos, uh, we get the interviewee or we get us if we're on the park bench to clap once 
uh, so we can do a clear sync between the two. What was really fun is when we were filming with my, uh, my iPhone, when we had Hannah on the park bench last week, um, if you film with the iPhone, it films in a slightly variable frame rate. Yeah. It doesn't quite do 30 frames a second, it does 29 point something, depending on the lighting conditions, and it drops frames at random. Uh, so it's fine for using Final Cut or iMovie. Premiere does not, Adobe Premiere does not deal with variable frame rates at all. So your audio steadily drifts out of sync. And I had to, I think I, in the end it was at like 99.97 something percent speed that video was running at. <laughs> to just quietly reintroduce a frame. And things have different clocks in them. So this recorder is running at a very, very slightly different speed to what my camera is. So mm. if we were to do a very long video, it would run out of sync. Oh, like, uh, yeah, and, but that's uh, hours and hours and hours of stuff. Maybe only one hour for, okay. you to start, for me to start noticing anyway, oh, yeah. for it to be a frame yeah, or two I out. Yeah, I really don't notice that. Um, Which, given how, like, I can, given how picky I am about frame rates, about things like that, about seeing flicker and stuff, cannot detect audio sync properly. <laughs> Just can't. Right, so that's microphones. We're now on to cameras. I mean, first of all, I, I want to say, say this first. Mm -hmm. If you're out there and you're looking at this as watched I buy, um, the best camera is the one you have with you. My yep. early videos were filmed on an iPhone 3, maybe a 4, something like that. Oh, there's a plane up there, isn't there? Um, and just pointing the selfie camera at me like this. So it was 720p, it looked terrible, the audio wasn't great, but it worked. Like, As we've said before, yep. the first thing you should upgrade is your microphone generally. Yep. As long as you can be seen, being heard is more important. There's a reason radio came first and is still around. Yes. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, what's the big expensive camera that you haven't brought with you today? Well, when we, when we went off to LA, what did we film with? I have a Canon 7D DSLR, which I've had for uh, eight years now. I annoyingly rarely use it for photos anymore because it's big and heavy and I can't be asked to carry it around. Yeah. And I use it mainly for our videos and photos when I've got it on me. So the yep. um, a lot of the Arecibo stuff was done on yes. that. And yep. Uh, the stuff we did in uh, America. Yep. Because because you've got the interchangeable lenses, you can get telephoto shots and all sorts of stuff with it, and it looks beautiful. And it, you can get um, the shallow depth of field stuff, which always yes. looks very pretty. <laughs> but instead of because I was bored of carrying that around, uh, maybe two years ago, I bought the Sony RX100 Mark II uh, pocket camera. It's base. It was basically the top of the range pocket camera yes um in that it does video for half an hour yep. in really good quality we show you it we, we, but it's it's filming we, we film yes. almost all of these on until i forget the memory card or i forget the camera but or... you know how for a long while i was saying that you can make do with a gopro for most stuff mm. and i tend if i'm out, out there shooting on my own go to a gopro i have now changed my stance on this <laughs> and it's because I went to Sweden and I filmed at the Museum of Failure and the video was okay, but the video quality was not good enough. <laughs> could, could, it, could you call it a failure? <laughs> so I now have, courtesy of an airport uh, duty-free uh, <laughs> camera, <price, shop. laughs> camera shop, I have the RX100 Mark V, which is the newest and shiny updated version of the one that we film with on the park bench. Um, and it's lovely. It is absolutely wonderful. I've had it about a week. Uh, I have already filmed a video with it that you'll see in a few weeks' time. And like for something this size, being able to go, all right, now I want to do this f-stop and this aperture, and now I want to turn the focus. And it's got a focus wheel that I can use. Or if I'm not using manual focus, it's an aperture wheel. It's the all all the buttons are customizable. Everything. Can we swap? Yeah. Because I find it easier to describe when I'm gesticulating. Blimey. The advantage of this over other pocket cameras that sold it for me is that it has a massive sensor in it. The sensors, the majority of the size of the thing, and the bigger the sensor, the more light it can get in, yep. and the better the picture. Um, the advantage is that this one has over mine. Mine, you can get the screen sort of like that, so then you're mm -hmm. looking at it from below, or it can sort of... That, yeah. Or do come out like that. Come out like that. This one can go into full-on selfie mode. This is meant to be, I look this up, the best vlogging camera. Now, I am not going to be that person who is walking around like this. But if you are that sort of person, this is a pretty good camera for you. 
Oh, but when you find out that's useful, then you're going to end up doing that anyway, because yeah, if that's how you do it with your GoPro, you can do that with this. I know. Well, okay, so the thing is, I, I'll talk about GoPro kit in a minute. The one thing I don't have for this is pretty much any accessories or anything for it. One thing, because I use GoPros for a long, long time and still do, I'm bought into that ecosystem. But this doesn't really need accessories. Right. It's got a tripod screw on the bottom of it, so you can put yeah. it on your crappy tripod that you bought from wherever. Yeah, 10 years ago. 10 years Amazon. ago. What, uh, 12 years ago. Two things about this. Yes. That, um, I like my mine. Yeah. Is the only model that has a camera hot shoe, uh, flash hot shoe mount on the top of it. Yes. Okay. I never have used it for a flash. It's useful for mounting anything else onto you because you can get yeah. hot shoe to camera this, adapter. This does, however, have a built-in flash. Yeah. I I would never use that. No, neither would I. And it also has the most useless viewfinder in the world because it's not an SLR. That viewfinder is just another screen, but it's smaller than this screen. Apparently, it's recovering the image database file there because I did some because uh, I've got the wrong uh, wrong thing. So you can shoot card. things like this and feel like you're using an old camera, but it's a lower resolution than the big screen you got on the. Yeah, back. I don't know why you'd ever use that. It's useless. bright light when you can't see when it's really okay, sunny. That's fair. Shall we swap back again? Yep. Um, it's really nice. Uh, I have a lot of good things to say for it. Also, it films in log color. Films in S log two. Oh which uh, means that, particularly for a vid the video that'll go up soon, I got to do some nice stuff to try and get, get more dynamic range. It's, it's now several minutes, it's now like... <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> it's now about half an hour later. Um, Continuity error. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hay fever error, lighting error, everything. But I realise I forgot to mention that the RX100 <laughs> is a thousand frames a second slow motion, which means that you can do 40 times slower than real time. We had a play with it the other day, and we weren't expecting it to be anywhere near as good as it was. Because it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even see that. We just remember what it looks like. I just, I just pointed the camera at Matt and said, Matt, go. <laughs> what I love about that, is, is the way that one eye swivels on its own, <laughs> slightly overshoot, and then comes back. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> the thing that. is, that, like, I was expecting that to be mildly amusing. Yeah. Uh, because we were, at, we were, it was about 9 p.m. We were in a shady area. Yeah, that was fairly It was a dark night. area. Yeah, I mean, that was it was a. Night. <laughs> Not the shady area, it was a dark well, area. Well, yeah, it was King's Cross, there's nothing shady about that these days. Um, uh, so I expected it to not look particularly good and just be mildly amusing. And then we looked at it and we couldn't stop laughing yeah. for about three minutes. Yeah. Someone came up to say hi, we couldn't talk to them because we were still laughing that much. Yeah. We, I tried to explain through my laughter why we were laughed, laughing, showed them it, and they, they didn't understand. Nope. Right, I'm g we're going to jump back to whatever we were talking about before now. But and obviously, uh, if you follow me on any of my social media, yeah, you'll you have seen that it. already because I put it on that. everything with no explanation. Yes. <laughs> that was the explanation. Uh, should we go back? Yeah. It's over here. I was going to click the thing before. <laughs> I haven't done that in ages. <laughs> my first digital camera was a Sony like this. I didn't realise this, but they've still got the same name. This is still technically a Sony Cybershot with the part number DSC. DSC yeah. Now, my first camera was a DSC P5, <laughs> which did like three megapixels and 320 by 240 video. Ooh. When I was, it was, I looked up, it was 2001 when I got that. That was, that was the first yeah. digital camera I had. What kind of memory card did it take? It took Sony memory sticks, their own homemade proprietary one, but that was fine because I also had a Sony MP3 player, yeah. so I already had a memory stick I could move over to it. This still takes memory sticks. Well, you can yeah. put an SD card in it or a Sony brand memory stick. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's I think useless. this one, mine can anyway. Yeah, I have no idea. But I okay. don't know why anyone would use them. Uh, <laughs> But yes, you can tell we're not getting getting paid by saying we just like. The <laughs> yeah, cameras. none of this is sponsored, but all the links in the description are obviously Amazon affiliate links. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. I have one reservation about that yep. uh, for people considering buying it for video stuff. Yep. It doesn't have an audio input. That's true. It's on um, camera mics are okay, but they'll get any wind noise. Yeah. And they're not very directional, so you can put. 
the little uh, sticky muff stuff you might use like to that. stick a like, yeah, that, like tiny. this, but tiny but and sticky over the top of it, which will make the wind noise a lot better. Um, but a lot of the time, if you're using a camera with audio kit, you'll plug your audio kit into the camera so yeah. then it stays in sync. We do it separately because... Yeah. Yeah. Tradition. Also, uh, this says it does 4K. It does technically do 4K for five minutes and then it overheats. In hot weather, might only do three or four, and then you have to wait for it to cool down before you get five minutes more. And you can't use the camera for anything else in that time, I assume? No, I, no. And I realise that's because it's got a massive sensor and it's got a huge amount of computation to do, and I realise it's not possible to fix that easily. It's 1080 for video. I looked at it mm -hmm. and I thought, ooh, that looks a lot nicer than mine. Yes. But I didn't upgrade. If the Mark VI, if that ever comes out, does, if that does 4K, uh, 4K continuous. for a half an hour, then If that I... does 4K continuous, I'm selling this one upgrading to it. Easy. And all these kind of things, uh, things that aren't video cameras, yes. but are picture cameras that happen to do video, they all do half an hour for tax reasons. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Stops recording after half an hour for tax reasons. Because that makes it a photo camera and not a video camera. On that note, GoPros. I have bought, in, like I said, I've bought into the ecosystem. This is a GoPro case for my GoPros. Wow. Yeah. It's actually, it's a really nice case. GoPro know how to build stuff. Don't know how to build damn software, but they know hardware. Um, so I travel with this while I'm going, going to a place to film on my own. Uh, so I have, I have two GoPro 5s, uh, one of which got dropped onto concrete and it turns out it's not as robust <laughs> without the cage the, without the case these these new ones are waterproof on their own well this one isn't anymore um but they're meant to be waterproof oh on their God, own if you drop it and break it you can't get a new back for it you can only get new lenses can't you right so that's frustrating on the other hand the ability to just go right this is going now mm. is really really strong the ability to drop at least onto grass without having to have the cage ah, keep on it cage the case and everything yeah. around it is useful um, it's lovely. It does 4K. It does 2.7K 60 linear. So it automatically does lens correction on the camera. Um, I've ranted about this before. It's still a lovely bit of kit. Yeah, we've got um, another video with going yeah. about that in more detail. Uh, spare battery case. Um, is that a charger built into it? Yeah, this is, this is the GoPro double battery case and charger. So that just sits neatly in there. If um, you're ever buying batteries, be careful about getting ones that aren't named brand. Hey, guess who learned this the hard way? It was 10% of the price. It was literally, it was, it was £4 instead of 40 and I just thought, how bad can it be? When they compromise on something, if they're keeping the same capacity, there's always a chance. I'm not saying they always are, but there's always a chance that they're compromising on the charge protection service. It melted! Two minutes plugged in, which, and so presumably, I worked this out afterwards, I had it plugged into a 2.1 amp charger, and presumably it was only designed to take one amp, and thus it melted. Amps are pulled. Oh, and right. The device pulls amps out, out, out of a charger rather than get, having it pushed at it. Nevertheless, whatever it was doing, it melted. Huh. Don't buy cheap off-brand batteries. Do buy a spare battery for your RX100. We've learned this. Oh, way. oh, the mine, the, the battery runs out, it can do, I don't know, an hour's worth of video. Yeah. Max. I can just about do a day's worth of photo, but I need to charge it. Um, the newer ones take, use have exactly the same capacity battery, but are fancier, so they use it up quicker. Yeah. I also have this, which is GoPro uh, is selfie new? stick. No, I've had it for a while. Oh, so what I used to, uh, to put the GoPro, well, first of all, I used to hold the GoPro like this, and now I hold the GoPro like this, because I don't have to have my arm in frame then. Mm -hmm. From some angles, that'll look interesting. Yep. Um, uh, and then this, and I realised going through airport security with this, that it's a very fine line between telescoping GoPro stick and extendable baton for whacking people. Huh. It's a very, very fine line. Uh, but they have not been stopped. I've not stopped. I've not been stopped yet, but I can't say it. Can you hold that a second? Please? Yeah, sure. No, by the, by the mic. Oh, by, by the mic. Otherwise, yeah. it'll okay, okay. And point it at me. Because okay. while you're talking about extendable flick buttons, I have a monopod, oh, I know what's which happening. is the one, it's the, the smallest, lightest one that I could find that will also just about take a DSLR without bending too much. Yeah, what's that? Because this is a Smartry GoPro one, what's that? This That's... is a Manfrotto Compact Advanced Black, I assume. Okay. Uh, it says maximum three kilos, and I think my camera and my 
24 to 105 L lens, which I like with it, just comes under that. Yep. And this extends like so. I mean, that is basically an extendable back. We're going to be children of others. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. We are. I mean, I mean, you might be. I, uh, I couldn't possibly comment. So, um, <laughs> uh, but it's. Should I put it away? Yeah, uh, but that's very useful because, like, just having to hold a camera like that, you inevitably. Do you mind not making eye contact while that's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Hannah is not with us on this bench. Let's move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't need her presence to be childish. <laughs> but this is lovely. Um, and it's useful for dipping into maelstroms and things like that. Because <laughs> you always need to dip into a maelstrom. From time to time, one does. <laughs> you never dipped into a maelstrom, Matt? I haven't recently, you know, yeah. actually. Let's see if I've got anything else in my bag. I think that's pretty much, that is pretty ah, much I've got one more thing. all the kit I film with now. This isn't strictly filming kit, Okay. but it's something I bought recently that I like. Okay. Ah. The same noise cancelling headphones that everyone has. The Bose ones. The Bose 35s, I think. Yep. They're wireless, they're Bluetooth, the battery lasts about a week. Uh, they're a bit bassy for my liking, but I've kind of got Base. used to that now. Um, all headphones are bassy these days. I can't get away from it. But yeah, they do the commute. Yeah. I got bored of getting tangled in the wires and breaking the wire all the time. Uh, so, right. So the one thing I hadn't realised is they're wireless. Yeah. Which your old ones teeth. weren't. Yeah. Um, can I can I turn this on? Yeah. I, um, because I'm always now I realise the effect will be sort of lost on the audience here, but I am a I can't hear the traffic now. I can hear a voice telling me it's connecting to G10 something. <laughs> okay, so this has a little little voice inside it that tells you what it's doing, which uh, is startling when it's at quite a high volume and no one warns you about it. So thank you for that. Um, I have... well, it, it hasn't got a screen on it, so when you turn it on, uh, yeah. you need to tell it which device you want to connect it to. So if I had it on my laptop, yeah. on my work laptop, on my phone, on... Yeah whatever um <laughs> so yeah it's basically got one button for that and it talks yeah. to you i i am very particular about headphones but i have weird requirements um the ones I, the one set that i like are the amazon basics ones that you sell with the fire phone and which you can now only get in the us and it's really specific but like i i i, I don't want those ones that completely block my ear canal and no one makes good headphones with that kind of response apart from apple's uh, earbuds which just, I don't want to wear them, Apple earbuds. Uh, and Amazon's rip-off of them, which is A, in black, so I prefer it, and B, two little magnetic clips that connect together. Huh. Um, they don't sell them in the UK anymore. So I, know. so I bought like four pairs last time I was in the US, they're so like 10 bucks each. <laughs> I don't like in-ear headphones. They get annoying after a while. I wear them a lot. I listen to a lot of music. I, um, yeah, I just got used to them. I don't, I don't like change. We've, I, we've, I, we've, had this, we've made this clear. <laughs> I used to wear throughout throughout my youth. I wore them, um, but nah, I, I I don't like them. But um, some headphone recommendations, thing as we're going along yep. this path, uh, those which are the Bose Quiet Comfort Thirty Fives. I think uh, they have the slightly cheaper. The, those are about. So if I look distracted, because there's suddenly a small army of rabbits in the bushes everywhere around us. That's why, oh, that's why it's all lumpy ground around here in holes. We're, on a, we're, we're, on on, we're sitting on a rabbit warren, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, headphones. I just realised they're, they're, they're never going to pick... I mean, I could try and point a camera at them, but it's, I don't think they're going to show up because there are literally... I mean, those are the closest three. If only you had there. a 4K camera in your bag that had a zoom on it. Shut up and talk about headphones. <laughs> Best camera's the one you've got with you. <laughs> Studio headphones, uh, Bayer Dynamic DT two fifties. I like them. We use them in studios at work. There's dozens of them. Are we about to get Watership downed here? <laughs> Does that mean the Teletubbies are nearby? I mean, I would like to see the Teletubbies version of Watership down. Just Poe being torn apart by a bigger, <laughs> older Teletubby. I think we're done. I think that's that's good. That's uh, we've, we've run through all the kit there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a watership down. 
Sorry, I'm distracted by a plane. Oh. Well, we're clearly on multiple. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. Do you think they all wave hello like bus drivers do? <laughs> no. There's, there's three planes up there just to explain <laughs> what just happened. 